Hey, Matt Man's back. Welcome back to my channel. So, this is a grab bag I picked up about four months ago, and the relevant information on eBay has been lost. I do know I paid $50 for it, plus $675 for shipping, and it was billed as a world silver grab bag. I had already cut it open thinking it was something else months ago and set it aside and forgot about it. So what I'm going to do, pull it over here. And that's been cut open too. Let's see what we can come up with. Uh, first thing is a bunch of loose coins in an envelope. Let's just go ahead and flip that first. So what I'm expecting here is medium grade silver, 50% Canadian, 50% Great Britain, some middle 20th century European, and I'll bet I find a Mexican one centavo. It's as big as a 50 cent piece, but it has as much silver as a old American dime. So we'll see if I'm right there. And look at that, right off the bat, that's the coin. Yep, that is 10% silver. What else we got here? That's from Sweden, 1931. 50 ore. This is likely to go into my collection. Happy to see that. This is from the Netherlands. A quarter gilder, 1956. That one might go in my collection too. Oh, <laughs> I can't tell. It's another Netherlands. A tenth of a uh, gilder, 1963. This is from Mexico. That's early 1912. And I think that's a ten centavo. And that's going to be a King George the fifth so that's a South African sixpence from 1934 it's 10 cents from the Netherlands a tenth gilder from the Netherlands this is going to be from the Philippines one tenth gilder and another one. All right, I'm kind of happy with that. Of course, I don't like to see him. But, uh, so I'll do a recap on all of this. Let's see what else. Okay, something in a box. A U.S. proof set. Not what I expected. No certificate of authentication and not silver. A 
67 Special Mint Set. And it looks like one last thing. Very well wrapped. In a silver proof set, that's a little better. 94. This one has a certificate with it. That's a flaw in the case. All right. I'm going to set this up and get the values on all these and come on back. This has to be one of the better grab bags I've ever purchased. I paid $56.75 for this lot. And when I look on both Redbook and on eBay, the 73 proof set was at $13. I don't see anything really wrong I do see these little marks up on the edges of these. This 94 silver proof set was at $30 and they go for that all day long on eBay. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but I bet it averages out to more. A little milky on the um, Kennedy. And the special mint set list at 14. Confirm that on eBay. So Redbook does a pretty good telling you the value of these proof sets and uncirculated sets. So when you add those up, you have $57. That paid for my lot. So the rest of this is pretty much bonus. So I'll show you what I got here. Once again, this is a Mexican 10 centavos, 1914. I have a much better one. I checked all these against my collection and I did find on this Mexican peso with a tiny little bit of silver in it. The obverse, again, I think it's the obverse because it has the head on it, but I've been brought up to believe that the obverse is always the side with the date on it. So tell me what you think about that. But anyway, on the reverse, or on the other side, I see a whole lot more detail in the one I got in the grab bag. I don't know if you can tell, but especially on the snake and on the neck of the eagle. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. This is an old 10 cent from the Netherlands. I have a much better example of it. So here's the dilemma you face when you do this. I have this 1944 in my collection 
that's got to be I'll push an XF anyway. Probably even better. And then I got this older, much lower mintage one that has less eye appeal but has more value. So which one do you put in a collection like this? The one with the more value or the one with the more eye appeal? I think I'm going to go on value on this one and replace it. So then we have Netherland Antilles 1 10th Gildan. I called it Gilder before, but properly it's called Gildan, if, that's, if indeed that is the correct pronunciation. But again, I have one in my collection from 1954, and I got three other ones, a 57, a 63, and a 66. Now again, the 66 is much better shape than my 54. So on this one, I'm choosing the other way. I'm actually going to go for the better looking coin over the more valuable coin. These are just judgment calls. I also had a 1945 Filipino 10 cent. I have a much better one. And then I had this one that I cannot identify at all. Looks like high percentage silver. Very thin. So I'll just throw that in with miscellaneous silver. Now, I think the finds of the whole hunt for me are these three right here. And these are going to be carded and put in my collection. This is a one and quarter Gildan. Netherland and Tilly's 1956. 64% silver. This one's a little hard to see, not much detail, but it is a South African sixpence from 1934. I don't have one of these. Good old. King George V. And my favorite of them all is this Swedish 1931 50 ore. That one will also go into my collection. So when I added up all of the silver of the foreign, I came up with 0 .5507 ASW, or actual silver weight. Silver is about $30 an ounce right now. That's $16.50. All the silver is heavily discounted by dealers. Most dealers don't want to deal with any of this below 80%. They have trouble Get, sending it off to the refiners, it's a pain for them. If you're going to group this silver, have one group that's 80% or more, and then have another group that's less than 80%. That's going to wrap up probably my best grab bag yet. Let me know what you think. And until the next time, Matt Man's out. If you're getting any value at all out of this, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Share it with your friends and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much.